Hello and welcome to JB Tech. Today we'll be talking about the biggest issues on the B450 Steel Legend by ASRock. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it really helps us out. So now we'll get right into the review. Don't get me wrong here. The board looks amazing with its digital camel print and its many features such as its amazing onboard audio, but there's a few things that make this board really annoying sometimes. Now the first issue with this motherboard is the software that is available for it. It is very prone to crashing as well as just generally doing not what it is advertised to do. For example, here is ASRock's A-Tuning software. It is supposed to optimize your system with an overclock tweaker as well as system info. Uh, this may take a little bit to load, but hopefully it should display everything correctly. Other features are fan tuning, and I had a terrible experience with this I will elaborate on in a quick second, as well as a very wide settings option which includes uh, run on Windows startup. But now to get back to the absolutely terrible fan tuning uh, experience I had with this. So basically what had happened is I was trying to just play with my fan curve, so I clicked the test button and then move my baseline, which would be the fan curve uh, point at 50 degrees, I believe, or never mind, it was 40 degrees. But what happened from then when I clicked apply is that the fan immediately ramped up and stayed at 100%, and then even after clicking cancel and moving everything back to where it was supposed to be, this fan would not shut off. So from there, I decided to click my reset button on my PC, and it put me into a boot loop, and I'll show a picture of that now. Sorry for the bad image, but I was just so surprised and eventually after uh, clicking the reset and then not working, I had to uh, press the power button a few times, mash the reset switch, and eventually it was turning the main power supply switch on and off, which got it to boot properly. A better alternative to the software is called Ryzen Master. Here you can see I'm activating Precision Boost Overdrive, which uses AI to overclock your processor. This allows it to stay within reasonable temps and voltages, all while maintaining stability. Uh, you can also manually overclock as well and play with everything in here without the risk of bricking your computer, as in the previous software. And one little disclaimer before trying to overclock your CPU is make sure you do your research and be careful because I would hate for you to fry a perfectly good chip. Now to further uh, continue my experience with terrible software, we bring you to the piece of garbage, which is... Don't fret though, this software has many advantages such as not being able to recognize its own components which are even just a part of the board or my personal favorite, which is not being able to boot about four-fifths of the time. But when you do attempt to boot it, enjoy the sweet game of roulette you are going to play with this software. It's very fun watching it try and boot and then close, and this non-stop repeat that you wonder, will it ever boot? And then in the end, the program just stops responding. But if you feel like it's your lucky day, you know, just give it a shot and see how it turns out. So the best way I found to get most of your RGB working, minus the AMD circle around the fan and the AMD logo and the RAM, as well as the graphics card LEDs, is to use your BIOS RGB controls, and these will allow you to control most of the components in your system. Uh, if you were going for a more RGB colorful build, I would definitely recommend using a system that has Mystic Light or Asus Aurora, as this probably will give you better compatibility, and they definitely will at least launch on your system when you want to change some settings. One smaller issue I had is that the mounting screws are kind of a pain to get in there, especially this one. It's just in a weird place with the plastic around it. Uh, a lot of the other th screws, I mean, I can understand them being in there a little tighter with the VRM heat sinks being quite large, but it's easily fixed with a magnetic screwdriver. Software aside, I would definitely recommend this board. Uh, if you weren't going for more of like a big LED setup, then it would definitely be a pain to get everything all configured right to the colors you want. Uh, we will definitely do a more in-depth review video on this board. It has good features and it's great for the mid-tier gaming price. If you've made it this far in the video, maybe leave a comment about your experience with this board and consider subscribing once again as it really helps us out and stay tuned for a full review on this motherboard.